up, y'all? Welcome back to the Nobles Nido. Um, if you're familiar with us, you know that we love to cook and eat, and we are all about showing you our grocery hauls and our meal plans and how we meal prep to make 500 bucks work for me and my family of four and how we as working parents make cooking and eating homemade dinners happen. Well, recently a friend just pointed out that we make a lot of dishes. And when we show you our grocery hauls, we don't always show you a lot of the ingredients required to make those dishes happen. And I've explained in other meal prep videos that we have worked for a long time on building up a stock of certain sauces and spices and stuff that typically lasts so that when we actually go to do our grocery haul and meal plan, we're not buying specific ingredients that we need. We just already have them on hand. So I thought that today would be a really good day to kind of do a little bonus video, show you around our storage area and show you some of the sauces and spices that we keep on hand. We're also gonna look through our my freezer today just because I am meal prepping for a video that I think I will release tomorrow. Um, and I need to know what kind of meat I have in my freezer so that I can plan accordingly for the next two weeks. So, little disclaimer, I'm gonna take you around and show you where we store everything. We live in a really small home. Our home is 1,400 square feet. There are four of us. We have a fifth family member on the way and our kitchen has a very small footprint. We have great cabinet space, but a very small footprint. And while eventually we will transform our cabinets into some type of like slide out pantry, for right now, we're just making do with what we have. But I am gonna treat you like family in the sense that if you come over to my house, I'm gonna make sure there's no dirty underwear on the floor, but I ain't sweeping for you. So what I'm gonna show you before we actually pull everything out and look at the ingredients that we have on hand are just really the true states of the cabinets that we use and the areas that we use. So they're not gonna be clean. So yes, we live like this. You can think that we're filthy pigs, but you try to keep it all clean and work a full-time job with two little kids. So without further ado, I'm gonna let my dog in who's scratching at the door and then we will jump into our spice drawers and sauce cabinets and all of our back stock. And I'll show you what we have. All right, let's go. All right, so first up is our spice drawer. So like I said, definitely a little dirty. I need to get in here and vacuum it out. This drawer, Bryson actually set up for me, super sweet. It's located right next to our cooking range. So I have all my spices right on hand. The things we constantly have on hand are sesame seeds, turmeric, oregano, mustard, thyme, rosemary, cayenne pepper, Italian seasoning, paprika, garam masala, which I don't use all the time, but I do use it every now and then, some red pepper flakes, African uh, berber. This is really great if you um, want to cook an Ethiopian dish called chicken tibs. This is the spice blend in it. It's just really good. And then we have some Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse. We don't buy a lot of pre-mixed seasonings. Um, we will make them on our own. We do buy taco seasoning a good bit just because, I don't know, I just like the flavor of it better. I'm sure it's like the MSG or whatever they put in it. But this is one that we love to keep on hand. It's so good on veggies, potatoes, chicken, whatever. If you are starting a spice drawer, the best thing that you can do is start with pre-made mixes because something like Italian seasoning is gonna have thyme and oregano and parsley and other things in it. So you don't have to buy these individually if you don't have the money to buy these individually because this container is gonna be the same price as this container. But you'll get more bang for your buck when, you just start, when you're just starting out. So we also have nutmeg. That should really be in my baking cabinet, but I'm sure I probably don't have room. Some poppy seeds for random things. Chopped onions, we really only use these in one specific dish that calls for them, so they last forever. Some curry powder, smoked paprika, onion powder, and then one more spice mix, which is this emeralds mix. I got it for something, and honestly, I just keep it on hand just to have, but it lasts forever too. And then some flake sea salt. I usually just use this to top baked goods with. I'll keep a couple of like, uh, dip packets in here, but we don't really use these very often. Just some ranch dip and then this classic guacamole seasoning. 
And then over here, I have these big containers. So if you're not from Atlanta, you probably don't know about your DeKalb Farmer's Market. It is an amazing, amazing place where there is tons of different vegetables and they have a fish market and a meat market, a lot of ethnic foods. It's just really awesome. Atlanta's really cool for that. And they have the best spices. So I've started transitioning to buying my spices from there because they're really affordable. So I have chili powder. It's really dark. It's not the same type of red chili powder that you're used to seeing, but it has great flavor. Some cumin. And then this is garlic powder. I don't know that I'll buy this from there again. This is just really powdery. And I kind of like my garlic powder to have a little bit more of like a granular texture to it. So, but it does have good flavor. And then we keep our pots and pan holders in here as well. So this is our actual pantry. And then this cabinet right here is a storage cabinet. And then the bottom of this corner cabinet is a storage cabinet. So I'll show you what's in here. This is where we keep all of our size sauces. Again, I haven't organized it for you. I'm actually gonna pull everything out so I can kind of show you what's in there and then I'll organize it going back in. But all of my sauces live here and some grains live here too. Like our the grains that we're working through at the moment live here. Um, and then up here we have all of our storage bags and parchment and all that stuff. And then up there we keep paper towels and other random things. Um, this is also part of our pantry. I'm not going to go through this today just because this is a lot of like the snack food and things that we eat. We do have some stuff down here like there's some vinegar, brown rice, there's turbinado sugar, some things that are bulk items. But for the most part, this side of the pantry gets worked through weekly. But this is my baking shelf. I'm also not going to go through that right now. Maybe I'll go through that a different day. And I do have a back stock, like I need to fill up my flour right now. So I'll show you where that lives also. All right, before I pull out our sauces and show you all of that, let me show you just the two cabinets that hold all of our back stock. We don't back stock a lot of stuff, um, but we do back stock some things just because we know we'll go through them. Everything has a child lock on it and those child locks are not coming off anytime soon. So it is dark in here. I won't go through everything. But this is one of the cabinets we use to hold anything that's extra that won't fit in our bigger cabinets. So like um, extra avocado oil. We've got some spices up here. Uh, my peppercorns live up there for my grinder. Some extra yeast, some other extra spices, canned goods. We keep things like I know we're about to run out of maple syrup, so I picked some up today. Actually, I actually have three jars of peanut butter because I didn't realize I had an extra one. So, you know, we go through a lot of peanut butter, extra kinder seasoning. There's some Old Bay, Sriracha, and I think some barbecue sauce back there. We keep fruit snacks on hand. We don't go through those. We probably go through one of those big boxes of fruit snacks every couple of months. We just don't let Zeke eat them more than once a day, if even that. And then other things like we go through applesauce. So that's back there. Um, we will use these in the next two weeks, but we, I just don't have room for those. So they stayed on here because they're bigger. We already have extras of these in the cabinets. All of this, it, these are our snacks that we got, like our treats that we got from Christmas that we are just going through kind of one at a time. If you've seen my like managing my weight video while I'm pregnant, I leave these down here. I just go through one at a time, try to go through it slowly. That way I'm not just like gorging myself on things that aren't great for you. Um, so yeah, there's some chicken stock and there's some flour back there that should be in my baking side, but it's not. Let me show you my baking side really fast and get it open. Okay. So up here we keep, um, that flour should be down low, but a lot of our bigger appliances also live here too. Like my Dutch oven, bagel cutter, bottle warmer, uh, immersion blender, just some other like random things. It's not organized. My crock pot lives down here. There's a wheat grinder in the back. One day I'll figure it out. So down here, I'm not going to go through this, but down here lives all of my baking extras. So like sugar, flours, um, oats, stuff like that, that we, uh, just keep on hand because we bake and cook so much. So yeah. Oh, we also, um, drink plain seltzer water is like our, our vice. So that lives here too. So that's it. Let's pull out our sauce, our sauces and oils and stuff, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here is everything from that sauce drawer minus a bottle of gin and a couple of cans of chicken and something else. 
Um, also keep in mind that over here I have sugar, salt, and pepper. So those live out here. And then I have extra, you know, sugar and salt to fill those cellars and then pepper for my grinder. So this is everything that I use on a pretty consistent basis. We'll start with oils. So I have coconut oil. I'll just use it in a variety of things. Vegetable oil. Both of these are, I don't use all the time. What I mainly use as cooking oils all the time are either extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil. Avocado oil has a higher smoke point than extra virgin olive oil, so it's actually better for high temp cooking. And then baking spray, love it or hate it, I love it, we use it. I, this is also really great for my caraway pan because the caraway pan doesn't need a lot of these like other oils because it's a clean nonstick. I actually just got this for Christmas. It's an herbed olive oil. I haven't used it yet, but I feel like it's gonna be great on salad dressing. And then we always keep sesame oil on hand because we do cook a lot of Asian inspired dishes. So those are the oils that I keep on hand. And then this is random, but it's in this cabinet just because it won't fit in my spice cabinet. This is gochugaru, and it's a Korean red pepper, like, flake. It has such good flavor, and without adding tons and tons and tons of heat, you can make chili oil out of this. You can do all kinds of stuff with this, so I have this on hand. And then I have a variety of vinegars, so red wine vinegar and white wine vinegar. I have balsamic vinegar on hand. This one is almost out, which is why I have this one. So balsamic, apple cider vinegar, and then I believe that this is malt vinegar. It honestly probably needs to go. It looks kind of gross and doesn't have a label anymore. But um, I do like malt vinegar on fries, but we don't really ever, we don't need a lot of french fries. So that is my vinegar section also. And then here are like the random sauces that we use often. So this is, the label's ripped off of it. This is dark soy sauce. This is not something that is necessary for a pantry, but it has such good concentrated flavor and it's great in like udon or noodle dishes. So I keep that on hand. It took me years and years to finally convince myself to buy it, but I'm glad I have it and it will last a while. Obviously you need hot sauce and Cholula is the best hot sauce, so good. And then I have, oh, I guess I should have added rice vinegar to my other <laughs> to my other pile of vinegars that I keep on hand. I'm actually out. This is just sitting in there so that I would have something to show you. I'm gonna get more of this at Kroger this week, but I keep rice vinegar on hand also because we cook a lot of Asian dishes. And then soy sauce. We always have soy sauce on hand as well. Also out and need to pick that up. We keep Worcestershire on hand for all kinds of things. You can make great garlic chicken with this. It's great in burgers, all the stuff. Then we have Marsala cooking wine for if we ever want to make like a Marsala and mushroom dish. And then this is Mirin, and this is also really great in Asian cooking. It's like a sweet cooking rice wine, and you usually put this in the pan with garlic or ginger and kind of let it burn off some of the alcohol, and then it just helps make the sauces super flavorful. So those are all the sauces I keep on hand and use a good, a decent amount of, except for this one back here, this Worcestershire, or this, uh, this malt vinegar. And so then this also lives up there. This is just like random open grain bags. A lot of this honestly comes from people that like bring food to our house or that come to stay with us and cook meals. Um, the brown rice for sure is us. Same with the quinoa and the farro and lentils. I don't cook with them all the time, but I do love having those on hand. We're not huge white rice eaters. So we're, this has been taking us a while to go through. And then, you know, some extra fettuccine noodles when I've like made lo mein in the past and couldn't find the right noodles. And then a few um, leftover lasagna noodles from the last time my parent, my dad and stepmom were in town. So that's it. This is everything that lives in that cabinet. And that's really a tour of our kitchen. And just to show you, it is super small but we love it and it works for us and it gets really cluttered and messy as I'm sure you see during our meal preps. We do use that area over there kind of as like a open butler's pantry. It houses a lot of our other big appliances. So yeah, if you want to see how we work with this stuff, make this stuff into dinner, I'd love for you to stick around, consider subscribing and liking this video. Um, and then look out for our next grocery haul and meal plan where we'll be putting all of this to use. Oh. I forgot to show you all of the stuff in the freezer. Let's try that again. 
So if you saw last month's grocery haul, then you know that we tried something different where we bought a bunch of meat from Costco and we're going to use that throughout the week or the, the month. Well, turns out a lot of it was left over. I think some of it was because it was the holidays and blah, blah, blah. I don't know that this will happen every time, but there's no real reason for me to buy meat again this, um, this month. So we're going to try to make all of this stretch this month. So it looks like I have four packages of chicken thighs, some cooked ground turkey, two packages of cooked or of raw turkey. I have a couple of packages of ground beef that I portioned out. I think these two are pounds and this is like a pound and a half. I have three containers of hamburger or ground beef for my sister-in-law who is generously sharing what her family gives her off her farm with me. I have about a meal's worth of frozen salmon, which I bought last week or last month and some bacon. So this is what is living in my freezer currently, but we'll probably use a lot of this up and then just try to buy more meat next month. Okay, well, there you have it. That is what our kitchen backstock looks like. So let's try this goodbye again. Such a Southern thing to do, right? You like try to say bye 12 times. So bye for real. Please consider hanging out and coming back and subscribing and liking and joining our family on this journey of trying to feed ourselves while working and bringing new humans into the world. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.